stop it right there so we don't get clipped for copyright for them playing oh. cult of personality mm-hmm. but yes all right welcome back to the malapert smart mother effing podcast i will introduce vlad and robert after the first angle i promise i'll try not to forget but for right now we're in the middle of an angle we started off the show just by playing some images first from raw from this past monday which was the 18th, and then from SmackDown on Friday. So uh, I'll go over what happened in case some people didn't see it. Again, I'll remind people that in case you didn't see any of these shows and uh, you're watching our reviews, it's going to feel a little you know, out of order. So you can press pause and go to our comments, and we have all the videos to all the historical footage that I've cut up for you guys very nicely in our review posts. So you can check that out, press pause on us, go watch it, and come back and listen to our review. But for right now, uh, let's talk about this Bloodline business. You just saw CM Punk join the Bloodline, but I do want to mention from Monday, I'm not going to review this angle from Monday, but I want to mention, since we're doing the last week in WWE and AEW in this show, I'll mention that Monday Night Raw on the 18th started with the Bloodline still trying to get Seth Rollins back uh, with Roman to join up with Roman and face the new bloodline. And they asked, they him, asked again. him again. Seth Rollins, of course, rejected him to, jo- to get him to join them, which obviously I would too. I mean, if I, if some enemy of mine that, you know, <laughs> suddenly came up to me and was like, hey, we need you to join us, I'd be like, man, you're crazy. Get lost. So Seth Rollins was facing Bronson Reed that night. And uh, Solo Sokoa came up because Bronson Reed had – helped the bloodline this past Friday. So Solo and the bloodline were here to help Bronson Reed. They caused a distraction and caused Seth Rollins to lose against Bronson Reed. So at this point, I think people were still thinking, you know what, Seth could still be the fifth guy in war games because, you know, he's feuding with Bronson Reed and Bronson Reed is getting all this help from the bloodline. So it kind of made sense that maybe Seth Rollins would still be involved in this. But anyways... Uh, I'm going to move on to SmackDown, and then I'll get comments from you guys after that. So what happened on SmackDown was the Bloodline basically were thinking, the old Bloodline, sorry, this is the OG Bloodline. If you guys are watching on YouTube, there's a picture of Jimmy and Jay and Roman and Sammy, and they were talking about how they can't get a fifth guy. So they're just going to go at it four on five, and that was their plan. And Solo and the Bloodline were demanding Roman's uh surrender right since they they couldn't get a fifth guy so they're like demanding they surrender and then the bloodline come out they're like well we're not going to surrender and they were getting ready to square up and face them and when paul Heyman came out who had been out since uh the bloodline put them out put him out right they attacked him a few months ago i don't remember how much how many months ago now but uh this was three months i would say okay this was uh paul Heyman's return and he introduced uh, CM Punk into this angle. So obviously CM Punk is a Paul Heyman guy, and he's going to just join this battle just because Paul Heyman asked him to. 
I guess. Although he did have a little bit of a spat with some of the new Bloodline guys a few months ago. I don't know if That's you guys right. remember. I don't know if you guys uh, yes, remember so. that. So, uh, uh, I absolutely remember. It was a tremendous thing. Absolutely remember. Yeah, it wasn't. So this wasn't completely out of nowhere. But anyways, this was the end of the angle from this night on SmackDown when uh, Roman and CM Punk faced off. And they're like, whoa, we got some help out of nowhere. And this is some pretty strong, high-level help. So, And then there's the nice image that we've been seeing on all the thumbnails of Paul Heyman's work coming together so all right uh let's get some reviews so what did we get for this smackdown i think i got some reviews submitted by you guys you fellow malapert smart panelists here let's pull up our rating system for anyone who's new to the show and might not uh, know how we rate angles this is how we rate angles just whether whether we liked it or not and how much we liked it so on this one all three of us me vlad and robert gave it a good solid two thumbs up so we loved it i could have gave it more but I'll let you know why I didn't, maybe, after you guys speak. So let me start with you guys. All right, Vlad, the wrestling expert, welcome to the show. And, uh, Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you for being on. I appreciate your wrestling expertise. <laughs> and we're starting with WWE today. So SmackDown, and if you want to mention anything from the Raw, so anything you want to mention about what I talked about, uh, no time limit, just uh, whatever you feel like saying. Go ahead, Vlad, please. The floor is yours. Well, uh, on the SmackDown segment to end the show is where I want to start at because that was obviously the, the highest rated uh, segment that we reviewed as far as this whole angle goes, right? Uh, this was, it gave me chills, man, I have to be honest. When Paul Heyman's voice came on, I literally got chills. I, I really did. It was a tremendous, tremendous moment. There's very few wrestling moments that in the modern era, since the Attitude Era, that give me chills. You know, and this was one of them. This was one of the few. Maybe Cody winning at last, you know, at last WrestleMania was one of the other ones and the way he won it, right? But anyways, this was a, a great moment, a great segment. The crowd went apeshit. And then when he announced Punk as the fifth guy, again, chills again, chills a second time. So I thought it was a great segment. The way they filmed everything was tremendous. The camera work was sensational. The whole thing was done on an unbelievable level. And then the shot at the end, it's like a movie, man. Like, at this point, Paul Heyman might just win an Emmy. <laughs> you know, he wants to win an Emmy. He's been trying to win an Emmy for his performances. I think he might just win one now because this was the shot at the end with, you know, uh, him in the middle with these two guys, you know, it, uh, and then, you know, them kind of going back and forth, like Roman's, like, questioning it, but, like, Punk. I mean, it's kind of saying like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing it for Paul type of deal. Anyways, it, it adds on to what now will be a more, to me, a more interesting Survivor Series uh, match, you know, uh, War Games match. So I don't want to really rant and rave too long. I have sometimes I do that, but. Uh, <laughs> hey, since you like something, you know, feel yeah. free, man. Since Because there's been a lot of recent stuff where we're just kind of criticizing and bashing. And a lot of people, mm. I've heard a comment on uh, one of our last YouTube videos say, you guys are marks that take wrestling way too seriously. I'm like, well, <laughs> should we should we not take it seriously? Should we treat it as a joke or what? I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 well, I don't know what that means. Uh, what that means, we take it way too seriously. I mean, because we're doing a podcast. So what about all the people that come in and do as well? I mean, everybody that reviews wrestling and – I guess as a mark, then to take it seriously. I mean, isn't that the whole point of this thing is to kind of review this and analyze it? Like, yeah, I don't know yeah. what that means. Well, anyways, That's, it doesn't anyways, matter. Yeah, it doesn't but yeah, matter, it yeah. is. It is true though that most of wrestling you don't really like. I mean, if you li put all the angles and line them up from all the wrestling shows yeah. on AEW and WWE, there's very few right. things that you actually give thumbs up and two thumbs ups to. But it's so, it's you yeah. Know. It's hard not to like this because look at all the people. All the people involved, I really like. You know, obviously Roman Punk. Paul Heyman, tremendous wrestling mind, one of the great wrestling minds of the, of, of the current, uh, I mean, people involved in wrestling, Paul Heyman has one, probably the best wrestling mind um, going, right? And then I like all the, I mean, Jacob Patu, Solo, I, I'm, I, I like Sammy, I like the Uso brothers, uh, basically, you know? So... Uh, well, the, the Tongans, you know, <laughs> you know, they're a little shaky, but nonetheless, they're, you know, I think they've been properly shown. But otherwise, other than that, everybody else, I, 
like immensely. Oh, and Bronson Reed. How could I forget Bronson Reed? Who's been oh, a great yeah, addition. Yeah. Yes. Who's been a great it's addition. so Who's funny been... seeing him in there. And they, they just, you know, taking him in with open arms and he's just up there putting up the ones. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Well, well it's, it is pretty hilarious. <laughs> but I, I wonder what they do now with Seth because I, for sure I thought Seth was going to be the fifth guy because it just made sense logically. Uh, I mean, he won't be in Survivor Series, I guess, but does he get involved in this thing just to get to Brunson Reed? I think he still gets involved. I think he might not be in the match, but he definitely will be involved. So uh, he has to, just because of the Brunson Reed factor. After Brunson Reed, after the, the, what happened on Raw, he still has to be involved somehow. So in the segment, by far the best thing that happened in wrestling this week. And um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'll leave it at that. But Robert, yeah. take, take I would, the wheel. I would agree that based on my uh, my the fact that I put it as our opening topic our opening angle on our show so yeah I, I would say that it's the best thing that happened on wrestling this week we do have AEW to talk about but we'll get to that for right now let's get back to robert the frozen asian thank you for returning to the show we missed you last uh, week and uh, we're, we're happy to have you back man so thank uh, you. let's talk about the bloodline you go ahead with that and whatever you got to say man unlimited time all right. Yes. So I agree. This was the best segment um, in wrestling this past week. Um, actually, for me, SmackDown had some pretty good segments. I, I feel like this is the second week in a row where SmackDown was the best show of the week, yeah. two weeks straight. That, that's what uh, I, I can, I don't know, when, when thinking of all, and that, that includes pay-per-views too. So I, I would say SmackDown had the best showing uh, this week and the week before. Uh, yeah. And this Your was... only other uh, two thumbs up was Kyle Fletcher versus Will Ospreay. Yeah, okay, this... we'll, we'll get to that, but let's, let's stay on topic. <laughs> yeah. well, um, yes. So, so th this was the best segment of the week for me, and I, I loved it. You know, uh, I could have probably given it a fire as well, but I actually, a couple of things. I watched SmackDown late. Okay, I didn't watch it live. Uh, so the the return of Paul Heyman and the revelation of CM Punk as the fifth man was already spoiled to me before I watched sure. SmackDown. So that mm -hmm. that kind of you know the the shock factor was wasn't there when I was watching this. So may, maybe I would have given a fire that that way. I don't know. So. Thanks a lot, YouTube and your thumbnails. Basically, just ruining it for me. But anyway, so the the shot the shot factor was gone. I already knew this was happening. Um, another reason why I didn't give this a fire, even though I love this a lot, is because I still uh, I, I still want to stick to um, a statement that I had made. I think maybe two weeks ago, and I think Kayon used said the same thing. They could have just left this as a four versus four yeah. War Games match, right? Yeah. Because, um, you know, at this point, this late in the game, this late in the the, the, story, the angle, the storyline, CM Punk and, and uh, Bronson Reed is just kind of like a late add-on. They're, they, they're just tacking on last minute. So they're kind of like shoehorning them in the, the like final minute of this, of this whole uh, saga. But you know, at least they're really big names, right? They're they're pretty uh, relevant um, uh, in, in wrestling right now. So uh, it's it's a good add-on. But I, I I think this could have worked just as well if it was just four versus four, and you know, left it as you know the the OG bloodline as it is right now versus um, the current uh, well the the new bloodline minus Bronson. It would have been just fine. Um, so yeah, but otherwise, I, I still love this. Uh, just real right, quick, before, right. you, before you go again, I, I just I, I agree with Robert completely. But <laughs> traditionally, though, usually war games is five on five, like traditionally, like, histor historically. So Sometimes. I mean, there, ha there, ha there, ha there have been I know there have been some four on fours that I remember in WCW, but for the most part, uh, I think it is five on five. But yeah, obviously in this case, if you just want to keep it bloodline versus bloodline, that would have made more sense. So. Yeah, but anyways, Kaylin, the floor is yours. Well, yeah, I, I loved it as well, obviously. It was nice to see the two eras of Paul Heyman, Roman, and CM Punk coming together. That's a trip. Uh, I will say that I think it made too much sense. If, if that's, that's not really a criticism, but it made so much sense that it wasn't really surprising. And I had actually heard a lot of people throw that idea out there that – they could do that or they should do that. So it wasn't very surprising to me at all. I was a little surprised that 
Paul Heyman came back at all. I thought they might wait on that. But this explains a lot about why they rushed that whole Sammy rejoining the bloodline thing because they had to get Punk in there and Paul Heyman back. And then I guess there's one more week next week for, you know, Punk and Roman and everybody to talk and figure out their, you know, teaming situation. So I think it all worked out really good. I don't think it's the it's the peak of the feud. I think there's more that's going to happen that, you know, might give us a chance to give this a little more than a two thumbs up rating which to us those are the premium ratings i mean we give we give out two thumbs up sometimes but uh it's not uh it's not common but these two up top this was fire and mine completely blown these these hardly ever get given by us so these are very rare i've given some fires never given a mine completely blown maybe i'm sure there's someone out there that might have had their mind blown by this <laughs> maybe you know <laughs> but okay anyways all i think right. i've only given one fire thing and that was to the the punk mcintyre uh bonus on that right that's the only yeah. one thing i think i did but yeah all right well i've given it here and there you know i i sometimes just really 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 love something but anyways all right so that'll conclude our wwe talk for the moment